Hi, and welcome back to another episode of You're in Charge, Now What? I'm your host, Glenn Pash. And the goal of this channel is to help those of you that find yourself now in charge of a team, a division, or a business build the skills necessary to lead high-performing teams. Each week, we're going to focus just on one topic, uh, one strategy to help you build those skills so you can generate consistent results and, and gain that success you're looking for. Uh, if you're new to the channel, just please subscribe down below. It would mean a lot to me. This way, you'll be notified each week when I release new episodes. And please share and comment. This way, I, I know what you're looking for, meaning maybe there's a topic or a discussion you'd like to have. And this way, I can build new videos to answer your questions. So without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. Uh, today, we want to talk about the difference between being part of a team and then being in charge of a team, or even a project. You know, we can keep it even simpler, uh, being in charge of a project. Someone has tasked you to oversee a project versus being part of the team that puts the project together. When you're part of a team or part of a project, someone who is in that leadership position delegates tasks out to you. So I have my task, I need to build this widget, this report, this graphic, some task. My job is to put the blinders on, go do what I need to do, deliver it back to the person who's in charge and wait for them to task me again. Or maybe we get to the end and we're putting uh, the, the whole project together. But again, I'm waiting to be tasked. Once you're in charge of the project, once you're in charge of the team, your role no longer is to wait. Your job is to move things forward. Your job is to understand the long-term strategy, the end result. Your job is to get all of those pieces that you've delegated out to however many people are on the team or on the project and organize them in such a way that we are accomplishing our goal. So let's use an example. Let's say we in our agency, we create new packages or new services for our clients. So when we task out the different specialists or different divisions to say, this is going to be a new project, a new service. So I need everyone to work on it. I task everything out. If I just stepped back and thought like someone who was just on a team, meaning I got things back from everyone and just handed them to everyone and said, okay, everyone, go ahead. You guys look at them, figure out what our messaging is and go tell your clients. What happens is I leave it open to interpretation of what they feel versus what I want or the unified message from our team is supposed to be. So how would I change that, right? Now I'm sitting in this chair. I can no longer put my blinders on. I can no longer just delegate. I have to aggregate all the pieces. I then have to think at, uh, you know, looking at all of the pieces to say, what is the unified message? Now, that's not to say I won't bring all the team members in because in my case, I'm not on the front lines working day in and day out. I need their expertise to say, is this feasible? Does this work? And once we have our conversations, I, because I'm at a higher level, not, not superiority, higher level out of the weeds, so to speak, the day to day, I can see the long-term strategy. I can see the pieces and I can see how we need to frame it, design it, build it. And then once we have it finished, this is a key mistake that a lot of managers will make. They'll just hand it to the team and say, go. But again, understand, even if it's a finalized product, if I just hand it off to someone else and say, go, I let them interpret the messaging of how it should be delivered or explained. So you need to now take a step once we have our product, our service, whatever it is. The next phase would be, well, how do we educate our internal team first? Before we go out to clients, before we go out to the world at large, because that's what we want to do is generate more business. I need to make sure my team understands how we talk about it, how it fits into our other services, how it aligns with what we're trying to accomplish long term. I need to make sure. So how do we do that? Maybe we have a, a meeting with the whole staff or maybe we have an internal webinar in order to educate everyone, allow them to digest the new products and service, let them ask their questions so I can answer it. 
We can answer it so we have a unified message out. Then we can set up a schedule to how do we bring this message out to our clients? And how do we explain it to the clients? Again, everything is already set up because the messaging is correct. The, the, the team has already asked their question. So now they're prepared to answer maybe our clients' questions. And we, we brainstorm on that as well. So everyone's prepared. Then we can move to marketing and we can move to sales to say, how do we generate uh, awareness of this new service? How do we push it out there? What's the proper messaging? But notice what we've done. We've done it in stages because I now, as being the person in charge of this project or this division or this business, I need to think down the road of steps. I need to corral the messaging to make sure that it's organized, it's systematized. And a lot of your job as a leader is helping your team understand why that's important. Because once you explain it to them, they go, oh, I see. I see why we have to slow down. Because again, enthusiasm, new changes, we want to rush to market. There may be a, a time where it has to happen quickly or it is immediate. Okay, but your job also being in charge is setting that tone of what's our timeline. That should be probably one of your first questions you should ask is what's the timeline for delivery? If it's immediate, well, then everything collapses and it is, uh, I don't want to say rushed. You just have to do all of those steps I laid out in a very compressed period of time. If I know that I don't need to roll out this new service for a couple months, I can move at a leisurely pace, not leisurely slow, but leisurely where no one's stressed out. We can take our time. We can really dive in. We can really think things through. We can really put things on a good schedule that's comfortable and controlled. I like those words, comfortable and controlled as a leader. Doesn't mean I'll always get it, but if I had my preference, comfortable and controlled to build, strategize, roll out to have an impact. The more well thought out you are in your strategy, not just for building, but delivering will help you uh, win over your team, also your customers, because everybody's moving at a pace they can handle. As I said, I, I'm in the agency business, so sometimes we don't have the luxury of comfortable and controlled. We have, I need it yesterday, or I need it now, or hurry, hurry, hurry. That's okay. But the more that you have those structures and patterns built, I can always run faster in an organized manner to accomplish what I need to do. Chaos is usually when we don't have a structure, we don't have any sort of rhythm, process, or flow, and everyone's just guessing and everyone's getting frustrated because we're wasting time versus this is our structure, this is our process. If I have my process, I can go fast at my process or I can slow down my process, but we have a process. We are organized. We are controlled. So again, I hope you found that helpful because for new managers, people who find themselves in charge uh, all of a sudden, and this is your first or second time doing it, it is switching your brain from task-oriented blinders on, I did my piece, to delegating, inspecting, accountability, organizing, strategically rolling things out, putting people on a schedule, uh, getting messaging all together. Notice you're doing tasks. They're just completely different than what you were doing before. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, just click the subscribe button down below. I appreciate that. As always, I ask you to share it out. There's a lot of people who could use this information. Um, and, you know, that's why I built the channel to help people. And as always, I'd love to hear what you uh, think of this, what your comments are down below. Uh, again, I thank you so much for your time. I know there's a lot of places you could watch uh, information or watch videos or listen to podcasts. It means the world to me that you're spending time with me. And as I end every single episode, you're in charge, but now you have a new tool to help you become more successful. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next time.